Greetings and welcome to a series of lectures on systems of equations, 4.4, systems of linear inequalities. Let's go back one step and recall what it is for to be a linear inequality. It's in the form of ax plus by is less than or equal to c, or it could be uh, less than c, or greater than or equal to c, or even greater than c. We want to graph the solution. First step is recognize if it's going to be a dashed or a solid line. If it is a less than or greater than, then it is going to be a dashed line. If it is going to be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it is a solid line. We're going to graph the boundary by setting it equal to C, solve for Y, and you'll have a line. Again, you're going to graph either a dashed or solid line for your boundary. Then you're going to select two random points, one from each side of the boundary. And you're going to test those points for its truthfulness. You're going to shade in the side that results in a true test. Let's take the example x plus y is less than 4. First step is we're going to recognize if it's going to be a dashed or a solid line. Because it is less than, it's going to be a dashed line. Okay. Second, we're going to figure out the boundary. Well, x plus y is 4. And I'm going to solve this for y. It's easy to graph that way, at least in my opinion. So I get y equals negative x plus 4. And that's a line with the y-intercept of 4. And then it goes over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. And from there, we can connect the dots and get our line, our boundary line. Oop, and that should have been, uh, let's see. Let me see if I can undo that. That should be dashed. All right, third step. We're going to select a point on the right of the line and to the left of the line to see if uh, which is true. So I'm going to just select, I don't know, 2, uh, 7. And I like 0, 0, so I'll go ahead and choose 0, 0 as well. So I'm going to plug in 2 and 7 to our equation, and we get our original equation. 2 plus 7, is that less than 4? Well, is 9 less than 4? That's false. So let's try 0, 0. 0 plus 0 is less than 4. Well, 0 is less than 4. That is true. So wherever 0, 0 is, right there, it's that side of the line that I'm going to shade in. Let's try another example. Negative x plus y is less than or equal to 3. Again, here are our steps. One is to figure out if the less than or equal to, if that's a dashed line or a solid line, and this time it is a solid line. Second, I want to graph my boundary. Negative x plus y equals 3, and I'm going to solve this for y. y equals x plus 3. This time, the y-intercept is at 3, and my slope is 1 over 1 up. Okay. It is a solid line. And now I need to figure out where my region is that I'm going to shade. So, 3. Let's test some points. Uh, my 0, 0 is available. And let's see, negative 5, 3 is available. So negative 5, 3. And 0, 0. So negative 5 in the original equation, it's going to be 
negative x plus y is less than or equal to 3. That's negative negative 5 plus 3. Is that less than negative uh, positive 3? That's 8 plus 3. And 11 is not less than or equal to 3. That is false. All right, in the negative x plus y is less than or equal to 3, let's try 0, 0. Negative 0 plus 0 is less than 3. 0 is less than or equal to 3, and therefore this is true. So wherever my 0, 0 is, right there, I'm going to shade this side of the graph. Putting both of those equations together, we now have a system. And we're looking for the solution that happens when both of these are true. Now we've already done the hard part, and we've worked through the steps to graph these. I'm gonna quickly work through it again. Um, I know that x plus y less than four is a dashed line. I know that the intercept is four, one, two, three, four. And I know that it is a dashed line with a negative slope. Okay. All right. And now we know, and we know dashed line. Uh, so let me undo that. I did that once before, but that's okay. Undo, undo undo. Good thing for technology. One, two, three, four, and downward slope. It is dashed. And when I tested it, zero, zero was a legitimate point. So the region that was true was this region. Now, let me change colors and we'll graph the negative x plus y is less than or equal to three. Three is the one, two, three, the y-axis. And I know that it's one up, one down, one up, one down, there we go. And it, it is a solid line because it includes three. And again, when I tested this, zero, zero was a legitimate answer. So the region that I shade is right here. The solution to this system is where they're both true. So all of this region is the solution to the system. It's where they intersect. Let's try another example. y is less than 1 half x plus 3, and y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 2. I'm going to first figure out for y is less than 1 half x plus 3, is that a dashed line or a solid line? It is a dashed line. So now I just need to plot my boundary. The intercept is three, one, two, three. And I'm going to use the slope over two, up one, over two, up one, to get my next couple of points. That way I can connect it with a dashed line. I do need to test a couple of points, and uh, I'm going to throw in 0, 0 really quickly. When y is 0, is that less than or equal to 3? Because uh, 0 times 1 half, that is true. So if 0 is less than 1 half times 0, plus 3, and indeed 0 is less than 3, so it's going to be everything on this side. Next, 
let's graph y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 2. Now, we know that y uh, let, uh, greater than or equal to is a solid line and All right, it is a solid line with the intercept of negative 2. My slope is 1 half, so over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, uh, oh, sorry, over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1. That should be enough points to give me a line, solid line. Okay. Well, it looks like my good old 0, 0 is available. So 0, is that greater than or equal to 1 half times 0 minus 2? 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 2. 0 is greater than or equal to zero, uh, sorry, negative 2. And therefore, everything like this is above the line, I, is true for this particular situation of y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 2. But here's the thing. Everything in between these two lines, all of this region is the actual shaded region for the system. It does not matter that there's some markings over here or over here. Those don't, do not meet the system solution. It's just everything in between there. All right, let's try a system with three equations. Therefore, we're going to plot three lines. The first one, x plus y is less than 4. Solid line or dashed line should be the first question you ask. It is a dashed line. And if I rearrange this, it's going to be y is less than negative x plus 4. So the y-intercept is 4. And my slope is negative 1 over 1. And it is a dashed line. Next, I have 0 is greater than or equal, and I'll worry about the shading in just a moment. I just want to get down my boundaries first. 0 is greater than or equal, or x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Well, that's a vertical line, and it's actually the vertical line of the y-axis. And it is a solid line. Now, y is greater than or equal to 0. That is a horizontal line. And as it turns out, that is on the x-axis. And it is also a solid line. Now, I'm going to start worrying about my boundaries. Well, for the first point, 0, 0 is available. So the red line, 0, 0 is available. So I am going to plug in 0, 0. 0 plus 0, is that less than 4? Well, 0 is less than 4. So for the red area, this region satisfies that equation. There we go. Now let's look at the blue region, or the blue line. 0, 0 is not available, so I'm just going to pick something to the right and to the left of it. And I'll just pick a 2, 0. Okay. And, uh, or I'll pick, I don't know, uh, what's a good point here? Uh, that looks like negative 3, 1. Okay, so negative 3, comma, 1. Well, x is negative 3 is greater than or zero, equal to 0. We don't have any y's in our equation, so it doesn't matter what y is. Negative 3 is not. This is false. Either you can try a right-hand point, or you can trust that if it's not on the left, it's got to be on the right. For the green line, 
we just have to choose one point on each side. So maybe I pick this good old uh, negative 3, 1 again, and then I'd pick something, I don't know, like negative 2, 1, or uh, 1, negative 2. But let's try this negative 3, comma 1 again. This time we don't care what x is, we only care what y is. 1 is greater than or equal to 0, that is true. So wherever this point was, which is above the line, that means all of this region is the true. Now here's the thing. We are only looking for where all three colors, right here, right in this region right here, is the only region where they all three overlap. So that would be our solution to this system. Sorry for the little bit of messiness there. Here is a prettier version of the solution to x plus y is less than 4, x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0. In the last example, we had a couple of equations x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, if you recall your quadrants and the values of x and y in those quadrants, it will help you graph these um, inequalities a little bit faster. For example, if you're given x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, then you know your solution must be in quadrant 1. Now, if x is less than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, then your re region, your solution, is going to be in quadrant 2. And if your both your x and your y are both less than or equal to 0, well, then you're in quadrant 3. All of your region must be in quadrant 3. And then finally, if your x's are positive, greater than or equal to 0, and your y's are negative, less than or equal to zero, then your solution, your region, must be in quadrant four. Let's try another example. x is less than or equal to four, y is greater than or equal to negative three. Okay. For x is less than or equal to four, it's going to be a solid line, and since it's x being a number, it's gonna be a vertical line at four. So let's do a solid line when x equals 4. And I'm not going to worry about shading quite yet, but uh, we can think of it like this. x is less than 4, so let's try our 0. Well, 0 is less than 4, so it's going to be everything on that side. Now let's try y is greater than or equal to negative 3. That's going to be a solid line, and it is a horizontal line at negative 3. So at negative 3, we have a solid line, and it's everything greater than it. So let's try our point zero, 0. Well, when y is 0, is that greater than or equal to negative 3? Yes, it is. So it's everything up here. And when you put those two regions together, it's going to be everything in this region. And I could color it all in, but I'm not going to waste your time. But it's all of this region. Let's try another example, this time with three equations, and we're looking for the region where they all overlap. So 2 minus, or sorry, x minus 2y is less than or equal to 4. Now when I solve this for y, so I can graph it easier, uh, here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be negative, negative 2y. Let's try that again. Negative 2y 
is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. And I'm going to divide by negative 2. So remember to flip that sign. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. Okay, that's going to give me y is now greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 2. Okay, so here's our new equation. y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 2. I'm going to erase all of this work over here. And let's go ahead and graph that. Y-intercept is negative 2. And then I'm going to use the slope, go over 1, or go over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1. And it is a solid line. So is my one boundary. The second boundary, I'm going to also solve that for y because it's easier for me to, to graph. That's going to be y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. And that boundary is going to be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 is my intercept and using the slope over one, down one, over one, down one, and so forth. So here's my next boundary, and again, this is a solid line. If you notice, I'm not really worried about my region yet. I'm keeping it in mind, but uh, I'm just graphing all my boundaries. Okay, x is greater than or equal to negative one. That's a vertical line at x equaling negative 1, and it is solid. So again, I'm going to place my boundary. All right, now I'm going to start worrying about what region I'm going to shade. And I think I'll go ahead and start with the green one of x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, I'm going to choose 0, 0 as my point and zero is greater than negative one, so it's going to be everything to the right. For y is greater than or equal to one-half x minus two, again, zero, zero is a capable point here, so I'm gonna plug it in. Zero is greater than or equal to, well, negative, or pardon me, one-half times zero is zero minus two, so, 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So for my blue line, it is everything going this way above it. And then lastly, for the red line, again, 0, 0 is a capable point. So 0 is greater is less than or equal to negative 0 plus 4. Well, negative 0 plus 4 is still 4, so 0 is less than or equal to 4. So it's everything there. And where they all cross is the region that is my solution. So it is this little triangle in here. Sometimes you don't have to color it all up in terms of, you know, doing the full region just want to get a sense of where they're all pointing and so using these little arrows might be a little less messy. Well it's wonderful and great to be given the equations but life doesn't work that way. So let's look at a real-life application and see how we can decipher it. So a college basketball arena plans on charging $20 for certain tickets and 15 for others. They want to bring in more than $18,000 from all ticket sales and have reserved at least 500 tickets at the $15 rate. Find the system of inequalities and sketch the graph. If 
or 620 tickets are sold for $15, at least how many tickets are sold for $20? All right, so let's do this. Try and get as much of it on the screen as I can. Okay, let's let X equal the number of tickets that we sell at $20. And let's let Y equal the tickets that we sell at $15. Well, we can't sell a negative number of tickets, so X must be greater than or equal to zero. And Y also must be greater than or equal to zero. And then if you remember, from our problem, we have to reserve at least 500 of the $15 rate. So from the problem, at least 500. So therefore, really, y is not greater than or equal to zero. It's greater than or equal to 500. Now, the money earned is the number of tickets sold times the price of the ticket. We want that to be at least $18,000. So the uh, X ticket price is 20 times X plus 15 times Y must be greater than or equal to 18,000. Here is our system. X or 20 X plus 15y is greater than or equal to 18,000. x is greater than or equal to zero. y is greater than or equal to 500. Now solving it is the same way that we went about before. Now I'm going to graph the 20x plus 15y is greater than or equal to 1,800. And what I did was I solved it for y. So I can use the slope and I can use the intercept. And I end up getting y is greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 1200. And I'm just graphing the $15 tickets are my y and the $20 tickets are my x. The red line is the y is greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 1200. We also have the restriction of x is greater than or equal to zero. That is the blue line. And y is greater than or equal to 500, which is the green line. And since zero, zero is certainly a point that we can test, but we know it's going to be above this green line because it must be greater than 500 on the y. It also must be positive on the x, and it has to be greater than negative 4 thirds x plus 1,200. If we plug in 0, 0 here, is 0 greater than 1,200? No. So it can't be on the left of the red line. It has to be on the right of the red line. And therefore, where all of those cross, where all of those intersect, is this yellow region. And the last question was, how much, how many tickets of the $20 price do we have to sell if we want the $18,000 and at least the 620 of the $15 tickets? So let's figure that out. Plugging in 650 for y, we get 20x plus 15 times, ooh, should be 620, is greater than or equal to 18,000. 20x plus 9,300 is greater than 18,000. Move over the 9,300, we get 20x is greater than 8,700, uh, 8, and x is greater than 435. We need to sell more than 435 tickets at $20 
to earn more than 18000 when we, we re reserve 620 tickets at the $15 price. Big problem, but uh, if we just use the same methods, th four steps of figure out if it's dashed or solid line, graph our boundaries, and then test some points, we will get the region for the inequalities that overlap. Right, that's it for now. Until later, be seeing you.